It's a good old-fashioned Buds battle with me, Ryan Buds, taking on my good friend and fellow stand-up comedian Adam Cousins in TV theme song and Limp Biscuit trivia. This is Trivia with Buds. What it be? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Trivia with Buds podcast. This show comes out every single Tuesday for your trivia pop culture pleasure. And I'm your host, Ryan Buds, and I am so excited that you decided to check out the show. This is episode 30-something, and uh, I'm 30-something years old, so that's kind of fun. I don't have too much to tell you in this show intro, except that it is a really fun episode. It's a little bit longer. It's about an hour and 10 minutes and change. And uh, it's me and my good friend Adam Cousins talking one-on-one, a bunch of dad stuff, a bunch of uh, Chicago and Seattle stuff, and a bunch of Limp Biscuit and TV theme song trivia stuff. So if you like any of that stuff, definitely check it out. And uh, if you like this show, rate, review, subscribe, do all that stuff you should do to podcast. Share it with a friend. That's the most important thing. I would really love to uh, get another pair of ears on this, and uh, your help with that would be amazing. So if you know somebody that likes any of the topics we talk about, or if you go through the feed and you check out all the other show topics and uh, send those links to a friend, that would be amazing amazing. Not too much to talk about. Uh, I did go to two live podcast tapings this weekend. I saw How Did This Get Made live, one of my favorite shows. If you don't listen to How Did This Get Made and you like movies, you are missing out. The tapings were of a movie called Body Parts with Jeff Fahey and the movie Chopping Mall about killer robots in a mall filmed the Sherman Oaks Galleria, not far from where I live right now. So, so much fun with uh, Jason Manzukis and June Diane Raphael and um, Paul Shear. So check that show out. If you like the league, you'll definitely know a lot of familiar faces and voices on that show. And, uh, they do it at the Largo every few months and it's super, super fun. So I urge you to check it out. I think the, uh, body parts episode is already out this Tuesday that they just taped this weekend or this, uh, Thursday. I think those, those shows come out, but check that out. That's my recommendation. Uh, other than that, not too much else. I would love for you to buy tickets to see me in Chicago. All my Chicago family, I can't wait to see you. All my pals there. Be doing a ton of podcasts and live shows and uh, speeches and talks and things throughout the days and hanging out with my ma in Chicago on the south side. I'll be there April 20th through the 23rd, and you can see me headline for the very first time ever, the Chicago Improv on Sunday, April 23rd. I would love to see you. I have a few comps to give away And uh, if you have a big group that wants to come on out, hit me up. Send me a message on Facebook or email me, ryan at ryanbuds.com, and I will send you all the details. Go to chicago.improv.com, or that might be vice versa, improv.chicago.com, or just go to improv.com and click on the Chicago tab, and you'll find all the information for April 23rd. Thanks so much, and uh, enjoy this amazing Buds battle with me and the very funny and talented and great writing, Adam Cousins. Here we go. Sitting here with a good friend of mine named Adam Cousins in beautiful downtown Pasadena, California. Adam, how are you, sir? Dude, I'm doing so well, Ryan. <laughs> and I, I'm thrilled that the first word I say on your show is dude. Well, hey, we are in California, and you, you're carrying a surfboard, which I'm is carrying strange. a surfboard. I'm wearing a tank top. I have, I, I have a mohawk. I'll know when the last time that was relevant for... A guy who looks like me. My but, uh, my friends constantly ask me, uh, "How's the surfing, bro?" Like it's no. like yeah, kind of all like Chicago, Chicago friends. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, what do you surf to work? You surf every day? <laughs> you yeah, surf, I, to I, I surf to work? I surf down the four hundred five. You're living a Beach Boys song, <laughs> or maybe that Weezer song. I guess it would be that song. I just read today this little fun fact for just before we even get into anything. The uh, Beach Boys before they were the Beach Boys were called the Pendletons. It's a terrible or the name. Pendle Pendletones. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, generally, when there's like a tone in the name yeah. of a band, sure. like a, that would mean the pendle would mean something. Yeah. Does pendle <laughs> right. mean anything? It's like a pendulum, they swing back and forth. Oh, p- like while a they're, pendulum. While they're singing, maybe. Oh, maybe. well, that's terrible. The Mistletones, was that the name in Mean Girls? Uh, ooh, no, it? it wasn't, but no? it was close. Something um, like that? Ah, 
Bob. Missile tones. Oh. No, it wasn't. I mean, it's like the O'Neaters in that thing sure. you do. It's like, there it's the go. wonders, but no one can pronounce it right. <laughs> what is, man, I wish I had a band. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, I feel like I've my whole life in love of puns has been leading up to having an unsuccessful one hit wonder <laughs> band. I was in a band very short, short time. I didn't, I don't even know what I did. I may have sang. Wow. Uh, and it was, uh, it was called explicit content. Oh, but wow. it was X. There was no E. <laughs> And, uh, and then my friends went on with that band. That was like the high school band. Like we yeah. always went and go see explicit content. And, uh, but yeah, I, I think I sang a cover of Adam's song by Blink-182. I was named after that song. Is that right? Yeah. I I'm forgot. seven. You're seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? That song's probably 17 years old. Oh my gosh. I could actually have had a son. <laughs> I could have killed myself and had a son <laughs> named after me and that song. Well, Adam, I should probably introduce you a little bit before nah. we get into this Bud's Battle. This is a special episode of the show where we're going to go head to head. Me and you, we're old comedy buddies. And I feel like uh, we met. I think we met through like uh, you hitting me up to do a show. Like, I don't think I knew you at all. And you just sent me a message for something and we're like, hey, can I do, I don't know, the show at my apartment or something? Yeah, like that? Uh, there, was that a, right? there was a time many years ago when I was young and passionate about the business. <laughs> and I would, <laughs> I would reach out uh, to bookers who I didn't know and I would just be like, hey, my name's Adam. I just moved here from New York. That was, that's, that was usually a good lead in. Yeah, yeah. Because then you could be <laughs> like, oh, hey, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm just trying to get my feet wet. I'd probably been yeah. here for like two years at that point. <laughs> and, uh, Hey, I just moved here. I'd love to do your show sometime. And yeah, yeah. it was uh, it was at your old the Starlight, your old yeah. apartment. Was, yeah, the Starlight, right over on um, Olive and Pass in Burbank, across from Warner Brothers. I used to smoke pot and blow the smoke out the window <laughs> of my bathroom and uh, look at the big Warner Brothers sign and be like, one day I'm gonna have an office over there. When I first moved to LA, this is probably back in 2000. To, I was to go to college, the, yeah. my first time in LA. Sure. Um, I remember I grew up a huge fan of Warner Brothers, just as oh, yeah. whatever reason, I just became a fan of the brand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and like I had like a big WB in my living room. This is back during like the, the 90s resurgence of like the WB network. Sure. And had like Cedric the Entertainer show and Steve Harvey and all those shows. And yeah. Uh, and I remember being a really big fan of like, like the old racist cartoons, like Michigan J Frog, and <laughs> yeah, all that. And I remember, was like, he ra- what was his racist? I don't angle? know if he was racist, but I've heard people imply he was. Yeah, yeah. It's like a song, and it's like a frog who's got a cane and does a little shuffle song and sure, dance. Sure, I it's, see. It's not correct if, if we're wrong in the comments. Mm. I don't know if it's racist, <laughs> but enough people have said it that it's probably true. There's some kind of. <laughs> Some kind yeah. of tone. Someone there. was offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> now yeah. that I think about it, it's pretty racist. Um, <laughs> but I remember really wanting, like, I I'd, I'd idolicized and like romanticized Warner Brothers, and then like we landed at Burbank Airport back yeah. when I was a you know I was eighteen years old. Best airport. Just graduated ever. from. Really fantastic. You I just used it last weekend. Plane, it's, it's great. It's still like it, it, you like this is it. There's there's almost no security. I feel like no. sometimes you just walk on and walk off. Yeah, I feel right. like I'm I'm in that movie catch me if you can yeah. and i'm leo <laughs> uh, but i remember i got off and like my dad was driving me we had all my stuff i was moving to college and uh i was driving down the freeway and like the first thing i see when we pull out of burbank airport was the yeah. wb water tower yeah and that was like famous from the animaniacs which is a show i didn't even really love that much i was a big sure. pinky in the brain guy but for whatever reason i don't know didn't connect with me but yeah. i really liked the water tower and yeah. so that was that made i remember I had that same feeling of like this is meant to be i'm supposed to be in los angeles <laughs> that water tower is decked out with lego batman right now oh they gotta gotta scrub that <laughs> <laughs> did you see it no i haven't seen i did see the first lego movie oh, and i just, really liked it you just had a baby so you, i you just i'm any movies for like the last I, year and a half yeah i have a nine week old uh 10 10 weeks tomorrow oh man you see how precious realize, it is that i'm tracking weeks <laughs> i thought she was like a few months old already but that's no. uh that's really new well two months yeah, or yeah. two and change yeah there she was go. born at the beginning of uh january she was born january 3rd just missed that a uh, good old-fashioned uh, tax cutoff yeah. deadline <laughs> <laughs> by hours she was born sure. early morning on the third could oh she was in uh she was not induced but it, we claim she was induced by the rose parade uh <laughs> because we live here in pasadena yeah. and uh the rose parade generally always held on it's a new year's parade so it's usually sure. held on the first but pasadena's got some funky rule that they never hold it on the sunday yeah and it was on a sunday this year because yeah. of some law from the 1800s of parades scare the horses <laughs> tied up outside, outside the churches and so yes, it was actually do. on the second this year yeah and we 
we didn't go to the parade, but we ended up driving to her grandma's house. We got stuck in some bad traffic. And that was the first time she felt a contraction. Wow. Uh, just kind of getting, it wasn't, it wasn't even that terrible of traffic, yeah. but it was the fear that, hey, what if the baby comes now? We yeah. would be pretty screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that fear <laughs> kind of started the process. Down the line, you write a screenplay with that very scenario. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's going to be the worst traffic you've ever seen. <laughs> We're going to be climbing over cars yeah. like that scene in Independence Day the, when they're in the tunnel. At the end, she has a baby. You name her Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Oh my gosh. She throws a necklace of the ocean, Titanic prequel. Oh, uh, rest uh, in peace, Bill Paxton. Be, yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. That's R. my R. boy, Bill. R.I.P. BP. Did you know Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my Did neighbor. You? Yeah, he was oh. my next door neighbor. Okay. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? <laughs> Your pack store neighbor? Yeah, yeah. He no. lived in the one bedroom next to us at the Starlet. You didn't know well, I did not know that about Bill Paxton. He used to host the shows, Adam. It's weird oh, that you don't remember. Man, that. you know what? I was I those those are my twenties. Mm. <laughs> I was I was really this is before the baby, Ryan. Yeah. I was really living it up. Uh that was a fun show you did though. I didn't oh, yeah. I remember that show. It, I didn't do well, uh -huh. but I remember it being really fun. Yeah, yeah, generally fun. if I have a bad set. I just walk away saying, oh, that show's terrible. <laughs> but I remember the show was fun. I, was gonna, I just kind of ticked. <laughs> I was going to commend you for your uh, your booking process for that show. Because when mm. you hit me up, I you made it seem like we were like old pals. <laughs> and I was like, oh, maybe I know this guy. Yeah. And then I'm like, and then I realized when you got there, I'm like, oh, I don't know this guy. <laughs> but you were hilarious. So Thank it's you. like That's and really I, nice we've been friends you. ever since. But you're yeah. one of those kind of guys who kind of inserts, I felt like you inserted yourself into my comedy universe. Oh, that's and then, fun. And then just immediately rose to the top and we're Aww. like, oh, that's that's one of my close comedy friends. Well, I think I I think we had enough people in common by that point mm -hmm. that it was it was believable yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we might have known each other. <laughs> sure. Um, and yeah, I, I really conned you good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, and we uh, are now a couple of dad comics. Oh my we gosh. Got that in common. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm just, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm just no looking problem. at the message I sent you oh, yeah. <laughs> back in, oh, way back? You back in it December of 13. What's it, does it say anything that makes it sound well, like we're old friends? I, I do introduce myself. I say, hi, Ryan. My name is Adam Cuddins. I think we met a few times around town, oh, but just yeah. in case I didn't properly introduce myself to you then hi we had never met <laughs> uh, oh, that's, that's a good that's good i don't know i i bet in my i'm an honest guy i bet in my heart of hearts i thought we had met but sure um i am a but anyway like you said um we're a couple of dad comics now couple do you do comics. uh how long how old how long how old is your kid now uh she's 118 months goodness no, gracious she's, she's uh i don't know two and a half about two and a half two and a half okay mm -hmm. and do you have a lot of i've seen you do stand up many times mm -hmm. since she was born yeah, do yeah. you have a, a large dearth of dad material adam i was uh ever noting on the on the drive over here oh, very wow. dangerously what's and... what's going on with her tell me <laughs> what what have you noticed that no other comedian has ever noticed no about one's your ever daughter? said but no one's ever said any of the stuff i'm about to say she mm. She goes to uh, when she farts. She gets scared that it's, oh. a, that it's a poop. Whoa! Ooh. And she goes, "Ooh, ooh, poop!" And I go, "What are you scared of?" She goes, "I'm scared it's a poop." And I go, "That never goes away. <laughs> never goes away." <laughs> It's like, uh, that's like your that's X-Men power. Yeah. It's a very shitty power, literally, and it will never go away. That's fantastic. So now I'm trying to think of the uh, X-Men that I could put a shit pun with yeah. to then name her that X-Men. What about... Um, like Jubilee? Like Yeah, so it has to be a current X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> Professor... That would make me laugh. Professor Nobody Poop. Nobody else. <laughs> Professor Poop. Poopily. <laughs> uh, yeah. Professor mm -hmm. X, who are some other Psy... Cyclops poops. I don't know. Cy Cy I'm Cloops. not very. You know what I said earlier. I'm good with <laughs> puns, and that's why I wish I named a band. But that's not working out so great right now. You are a, a comedy writer, and I'm you're working right now at a place called Brain Jolt Media, where we are recording this podcast. Yep, we're here. Um, I like that. I tried to just create a sound effect for it. Like, yeah. uh, we don't have a we don't have a drop. Um, <laughs> this is the, uh, the best podcast I've ever done because I showed up at your uh, place of work and you handed me a, uh, a full 16 ounce beer <laughs> yeah, from a, a keg. You're and welcome. that's just part of the building. And yeah. uh, super excited. <laughs> or in a conference room. This is great. Yeah. If there's an I, echo, it's because we're very important right now. <laughs> we're, we're yeah, we grabbed important. it. There's a plant in the corner. Yeah. Somebody, a, a lady walk, came by hoping she could clean in here. But no, we're, we're still using it. There's a whiteboard. We will definitely draw some penises. We may trace some penises on that thing before we leave, right? Well, this is a video stream, right? Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We okay. should we should have set that up. I Where are the cameras? <laughs> Remember that that's a Seinfeld line yeah. from when he has uh, Jack it's Hanna. Jack, no, Jack his, Fowler. Jack Fowler yeah, on yeah. his uh, 
on his Merv Griffin. That's my all-time favorite Seinfeld episode, by the it's way. It's one of the I love that he would sit down and do a talk show with with no cameras in yeah. sight. Like it's, he just it, asked the question like he's kind of a little worried about it, but he'll still do it. It's got all of my favorite things because yeah. I was a big fan of faking like radio shows or faking whatever as a kid, just sure. recording them onto a tape. Mm-hmm. I was a big fan of pigeons. I had a pet pigeon, and that's the episode <laughs> okay. where George runs over a pigeon. Yeah. Um, I was a high school wrestler. Elaine buys wrestling shoes so she can sidle up on somebody. Oh, yeah. Um, and then he's got the heat. Then she has to give him the uh, the mouth, the mints, but yeah. he can't use one because he Again, has cankers. My cankers. And then, uh, and then Jerry also is dating this girl with a crazy toy collection and I was obsessed with toys. Boom. So it's got, it's the four, it's all cousins. There that is. episode is The Mount Rushmore all of Adam Cousins stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, speaking of weird things, yeah, I do work as a comedy writer now. Um, and, uh, yeah, I get, uh, it's, it's honestly the dream, you know, yeah. um, I, when I was coming up, I wanted to work for like a Conan or Kimmel or all those things. And I like, it's still, you know, it's out there. I'd still like to be over there at some point in my life. But yeah. like right now it's like, you know, with the kid, uh, I live in Pasadena, so it's very convenient. Yeah. Um, they treat me great here. Uh, and I get to, uh, yeah, dream up funny things and we make videos and I get to get to have fun for a that's, job. It's really great. That's the best. When people ask me, they're like, what's it like working on Ridiculousness, the yes. clip show? I'm always like, it's like one of those jobs you see in a rom-com that like yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt has. Like he works in an office, like a greeting card office, uh-huh. I think in 500 Days of Summer. And you're like, yeah. nobody works in a fun place <laughs> like that. That looks like they're just like messing around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, these kinds of jobs, just walking in here, I could tell by the environment and the stuff that's decorating this room. I'm like, this is, uh, these are fun people. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I did a week at Ridiculousness a long time ago. Uh, I have it just... bullet pointed on your old little Oh, I'm here. sorry. Adam Cousins. Uh, he's a contributing writer. Weekend Update. Yes. So you've, You've written a joke, sent yes. it in, and have you seen that joke performed on the show? Yes, uh, amazing. Few, not many, and sure. it's one of those. It, it's one of those weird processes where uh, they don't credit you officially. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but you know it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's such a it's such a ridiculous yeah. no pun intended process. <laughs> um, Same that, thing uh, with uh, yeah. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Uh, I Jimmy Fallon. That was a long. That was too. I was green at the point. The guy. Fallon's a funny story. I was approved to send in jokes there. Yeah. Um, back in the first year of the show, uh, when it was still late night before it was the tonight show, uh, because I knew the head writer and he pitied me as like probably a one year in comedian. Yeah. And I was like, Hey, go submit jokes. He's like, yeah, fine. <laughs> and then, and then good for him. Like pretty soon into it, the writer strike happened. He's yeah. like, sorry, kid can't take your jokes anymore. <laughs> Is so that, he, he lucked out. <laughs> is that process for people listening that are like, cause, cause, um, I think a common misconception of comedians starting out is that there is a huge industry for writing for other people, which there is, but not, it's not like a job you can just get. It's like, no. you have to, you have to really know that person pretty well, much. Right? Yeah. And it's like really well-known people yeah. like yeah, Tina yeah. Fey and Louis CK will yeah. write for Chris Rock. Sure. Not me yeah <laughs> like people yeah. who are who, people who don't need writing jobs yeah write for successful comics exactly yeah. um Gaff- like G- jim yeah. gaffigan he yes. has like that voice that like um my friend bill bunker from chicago he's mm-hmm. uh he's like a da- you know kind of like a dad comic yeah and he he can he's written a few jokes i think jim's used and yeah. it's like that that makes sense because mm-hmm. it's like he know he opened for him i think yeah. a few times and then he's like hey um you know if you have any stuff that fits my stuff mm-hmm. send it my way i have to put yeah. out a special year pretty yeah. much and you know that that once you get to that level, that's like a whole different thing. But yeah. I think sometimes, like sometimes people, I'm sure you've heard like after shows, like people go, you write all your own stuff. You're like, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> who else would write jokes for me? I'm yeah. just the middle guy at a club in yeah. Milwaukee or no, something. You I know don't know have I mean? money for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sleeping in my car right now. I can't pay people for these terrible jokes that just bomb for 30 minutes. I do feel like though, you could write jokes for me and I could write jokes for you. Yes, I actually And not that. because we're both the dads now, but because I I just feel like based on what I've seen of yours and what you've seen of mine, I, I think we've given each other tags and things. Oh, absolutely. And, it, and I think that that would, uh, I think that that would work out. Uh, well, I great. think that happens more often than not. It's like, yeah. you'll be like BSing with somebody in a green room and then you'll come up with an idea. Like this happened, like, my, do you know Ralph Guerra? He's yeah. A, he's a comedian oh, yeah, friend he's of great. ours. Yeah. He's going to be and, on the show soon against JC Carias. Oh, those are both good guys. Boys, oh, yeah. actually, I was with both of them when this happened. We're there at a go. club and uh, I was just doing some guest spots and we were just hanging out in the back. And I work pretty clean. Yeah. And I thought of a joke premise. I'm not going to say what it is right now because it's now like another one of those comedians we're just talking about. Yeah. And, uh, and I wrote the entire thing and it was really funny and everybody cracked up. But I was like, 
I, that's not me. I yeah, can't, I would never, that. I'll say it once. I'll feel bad about sure. it and I'll never tell it again. Yeah. And so I just gave it away and yeah. one of them grabbed it and, uh, now it kills and I feel kind of bad about <laughs> it, but I also feel kind of good about it. Sure. Um, but it's like, it's yeah, like, absolutely. It's like the smaller scale version of the weekend update then. Yeah, you're absolutely. Like, yeah, and, and you're like, I came up with that. No one's going to know. No one's going to know, but it's but me. It's all right. It's mine. And I, yeah, I would like to do that in a different, and that, that's not blowing up either Ralph or JC. They're both sure. fine with it and they would honestly own up to it. It was, yeah, we'll, we'll claim it was a process. <laughs> We all wrote it together. Um, I gave no, it was me. <laughs> uh, I gave Rob O'Reilly a tag for sure. a joke at Flappers when I first moved here. We mm-hmm. were doing a show in the YooHoo Room, Flappers mm-hmm. Comedy Club, Burbank, California. I had my phone recording my set on the back table, and I think I may have been um, hosting the show. And when he, when I grabbed my phone, he goes, "Hey man," he goes, "You shouldn't leave your phone in the back of the room. People will grab that." And I'm like. No, they won't. First of all, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> first de- of all, definitely no one's gonna take. I've been in Santa for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. room, and uh, and it's the smallest. It's the most uh, uh, surveillable room. Like yeah. I could, I'd be like, hey, that's my phone. You just scrapped. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's like a 40, 50 seat room. So, I that, then we started talking. We were just BSing, and he had a joke. I think about a f- how big a female condom is, or a, something about a female mm, condom. Okay. And I had a joke from years back about how large they were and i used it as a wind sock or something insane that is so generic because no one uses female condoms <laughs> but he somehow plugged into something he was doing at the time and he he used it and then it and then it worked really well for him somewhere and he like texted me hey man that that tag really worked thanks so much and i was like cool and i, I wasn't going to do anything with it yeah. and then i was going through my phone aching for a job yeah and i remember rob worked at mtv on something so sure. i text him and he goes yeah my boss Teresa is uh, looking for somebody like today Got the job the next day, and I've been there for three three years. This, That's fantastic, this month. man. So yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the 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 process that goes into literally just talking to someone else or reaching out. I constantly tell people, I go, when you get to, to be in dire straits, literally just text everybody on your phone something, and oh, yeah. something will come back that leads to something else. Oh yeah, it's it's wild. Pretty much, and sure. sometimes I feel a little bit of guilt about it, but like every job I have, I've gotten because I know people and yeah. like I'm around and sure. I'm friendly and I to do my own horn, but like, and you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't know. Like, and yeah. so sometimes I'm like, well, I didn't earn that because you know, Jamie Lee got that for me. It's like, no, she's your friend. You yeah. started with her. Yeah. She got successful and she's helping you out. 100%. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, <laughs> and, but like yeah. people, I don't know. I feel like a, like I always feel like an imposter, like they wouldn't have hired me if they would. It's like, yeah, yeah first of all, they wouldn't have hired you if you weren't sure. good. And secondly, they wouldn't have kept you if you yeah, weren't yeah, good. Yeah. So, That's, so good for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. You too, man. Um, Thank you. I'm going to uh, transition into your category. So Categories. This is a, now that we know a little bit about you and your yeah. background and our background as friends, we're going to get into some uh, trivia categories. Cool. And uh, you gave me these five things. So we're going to talk <laughs> about why you like these five Which things. Which I stressed out about giving you last night oh, because yeah. I thought these aren't, these aren't good. People freak out because then uh, also, I mean, just sending the five to you, I was yeah. like, okay, what do I do? You know? Yeah. So you have five for me. I gave you five categories and you wrote 10 questions about one of those things. Yes. And I did the same thing for your categories. So we'll talk about yours first. These are Adam's categories. Categories, things he think he'd be uh, he'd be good at at trivia. Here's the first one: Seattle music. Seattle music. You're from up there. I'm from Seattle. I'm wearing flannel and ripped jeans right now. <laughs> Uh, although you can't tell the rip because it's in the crotch, but it's there. <laughs> it's it's a big rip. It's it's the hole is big enough yeah. now that I shouldn't be wearing them anymore. Yeah. But similar, <laughs> I have the baby now. I haven't been able sure. to go shopping. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just making it work, and I'm just not sitting spread eagle anywhere. Sure. Uh, which you and shouldn't be doing if, anyway. I don't know. If, I don't know if you got this email, but you do. All the clothes you buy are from Kmart now because oh, you're I didn't you're know pops. That. You're oh, pops. I should. That's how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in Seattle. I uh, lived there until I was 18. I was uh-huh. just up there last weekend for some stuff. And that was the first time I was there in a few years. And I really, I realized that's a good town. Oh, yeah. That's a heck of a town. <laughs> but when you're young and you're just like, I want to get out of there. Like yeah. I said, when I moved to L.A. when I was 18. Yeah. Um, it, it just like, you don't realize it. But where you're from, pretty good place. There's a reason <laughs> yeah. your parents were there in the first place. <laughs> I never have been up to uh, what they call the Pacific Northwest, oh, right? Yeah. And um, is there, how soon do I need to go to Seattle as a 31-year-old person? Like, are you like, go, I mean, there's no rush. Right. You won't is, know any different. <laughs> but if you're, like, if, um, in terms of urgency, like, uh, like, there's so much fun stuff to do up there. You should go there right now. You should go with the kid, without the kid. What do you think? But see, again, that comes back to my experience growing up there. I don't think it's a fun town. Okay. I think it's a nice town. Sure. And I think it's got a lot to look at, yeah. but it's not like a big night, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm sure there's people who disagree. I don't think it's yeah. a huge nightlife town. It's just like, you could. it's a good 
going for walks. Yeah, yeah. People say hiking. I don't know about that. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure it's great for that. I just don't hike. So you say a, a weekend, not a week visit kind of a thing. Yeah, definitely. A, a great weekend. And you can fly out of Burbank, round there trip for go. like 140 bucks. Really? Yeah. Take it, go up there, you and the wife. Yeah. Come fly out on a Friday night, come back on a Sunday like I just did. It's, it's great. We just went up to Monterey. Do you ever go up that way? I Well, I have not been to Monterey, yeah. but I'm watching this new show called uh, Big Little Lies that uh-huh. takes place in Monterey. Interesting. Uh, did absolutely nothing related to why you would go there. Like no, nothing. No wine near, tasting. Nope. No, we don't do wine really. Uh, we did nothing near the water. Yeah. We got there kind of late in the day. Uh, we stayed at a terrible uh, Groupon kind of hotel that her my in-laws gave us, which was nice of them, but not a great place. Sure. And then uh, we saw Logan, which was awesome. So that was great. Okay. But as in terms of driving five hours to go see Logan, yeah. you're like, oh, <laughs> that's on. a long way to go yeah. to see Logan. But the ride up there and back, we hadn't hung out in a really long time. Oh, that's Just so us cool. two. That was fun. And um, we did go to the Winchester house. Do you ever go there? I've heard of it, but it's I don't like know what big, it is. It's like a big, it's this woman that was uh, married to the son of the guy who created the Winchester rifle. Oh, okay. And so the sales of that went through the roof in the late 1800s. And um, her husband died. She inherited $20 million mm-hmm. and... Um, they said she made about $1,000 a day in interest on the what? majority stock she owned in the company. That's great. And back then, they said that was about $23,000 a day. Fantastic. So, um, for now. So it was it was cool to hear all about that. She she built this 160-room mansion. So you can go tour this mansion. It's supposedly haunted. There's tons of staircases Ooh. that lead to nowhere, trap doors, weird little uh, quirks and things, and ghosts, supposedly. And they're filming a movie called uh, Winchester starring Helen Mirren playing the woman. Oh, wow. And they're going to film it in the house. So it was a cool place to go. We, we, we'd wanted to go since we like saw the dumb brochure at some touristy place. Um, and we just got back from that. And it was a good time. So the trip was good, but it was a lot of driving for like that. You know what I mean? And Logan. Now, you um, grew up in Chicago proper? or a South suburb called Crestwood, Illinois, about a half hour south of the city. Okay. There's something I'm really into right now. And I guess they're making a movie about it. This, but you, the Winchester Chirac, house. Just from- is it Chirac? The movie Chirac? No, it's not. <laughs> but this reminded me of what you're just talking about. Mm-hmm. It's uh, the story of H.H. H. Holmes. Are you aware of H.H.? H.? I know all about it. And the murder mansion at the World's Fair. Sure. And that Le- is and fascinating. And Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yes. He's going to play him. Yeah. And you just mentioned like, oh, there's a big mansion. They're making a house. And I'm like, well, make sure it's doors, the right place. Acid, yeah. washes. This seems yeah. insane. Mm-hmm. That's going to be... I bet you that'll be a terrifying movie, and I bet you he gets nominated for it. I don't know if he'll do well. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's just so dark. I feel like people like that kind of stuff, and if you get to a high-profile actor on board like yeah. that, I think they're kind of like, ooh, like now I really want to know more about it. Well, I'm fascinated with all like the L.A. murder houses. Like Los Feliz has a lot of them. Like yeah. there's, there was, until recently, somebody just bought it, actually, but there was a house in Los Feliz that in, it was like the winter of the 1960s. Yeah. Like this doctor went nuts. Sure. It was like Christmas Eve and he murdered his wife and his son and bludgeoned his daughter, but she escaped. And then he killed himself. Wow. Um, Anyway, long story short, he, the family estate sells the house. The daughter never wants to go back into it. Uh It sells to somebody who bought it as an investment, never did anything with it. They end up selling it to somebody else. They end up selling it to somebody else. So as of last year, 2016, no one had been in the house since the 60s. Oh my God. And people can like climb this hill behind it in Los Feliz and look in the window and you can still see like the old Life magazines on the table. Oh, wow. And the old like plastic Christmas tree is still yeah. up. And because it happened in like the holiday season. Sure. And it's like, I mean, they've cleaned the bodies out of there. <laughs> but like all the decoration is exactly from that night, yeah. 1960. And it's an, and someone just bought it. I don't know what they've done with it yet. In a similar, less macabre thing, I read something about a shoe store. That well, I think in New York was um, like they owned the building, but nobody ever did anything with it, and it closed, and the family died. So someone got into it recently, and it's all the preserved shoes from like 1965. Wow, everything has not been touched. So it's like an entire shoe store, like museum. That's very cool. Um, yeah, so crazy when that stuff happens. Nice. That all stemmed. That whole conversation stemmed from Seattle music. Seattle music. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I grew up in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, great town, great music. There you uh, go. I, I grew up, I grew up in Seattle in the 1990s. Yeah. You know, so clearly I listened to a lot of Coolio. Uh, it, <laughs> I did. It was weird. I, I Is he from Seattle? No. He oh. was from like Long Beach or something. Oh. But like, it was just the popular music at the time. Because yeah. like, when you're in fourth grade, you listen yeah. to what's big on the radio. Which sure. at the time was Biggie and Tupac. Oh, and yeah. Like Coolio. And did you ever have, are you, you're, are you the same age as me? 31? I'm 32. I'm 33 okay. now. Actually. Oh, 33. Yeah. So did you ever have this? Like, I remember I didn't listen to music until some of my other friends started sure. to, and yeah. they were like, uh, like into the band Bush. 
Oh, and they'd sure. be like, do you like Bush? I'm like, he's good. Like, I would, just, I would like, <laughs> yeah. not say the right thing. Doing all I'd be like, wrong. Yeah, I like that guy, R.E.M. He's pretty good. <laughs> I remember a gangster one time asked me if I get crazy. And yeah. I said, yeah, I'm kind of crazy. And then he beat me up. <laughs> because <laughs> I guess that means do I want to fight. But I didn't oh, know that man. at the time. You, sure. you get crazy, Holmes? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> The best gangsters I ever met in my life were outside of uh, Echoes Under Sunset. Yeah, they used to have a lot of gangsters down there. There were two gangsters hanging outside, and I walked by, and uh, the one guy said to the other guy, um, yo, bed knobs, we got to get going. Oh. And I was like, bed knobs? And, I, and then I realized, I'm like, oh, the guy that yelled at him must be broomsticks. Oh. Because why else yeah, would you yeah. hang out with the guy in bed knobs? Or was that uh, Indian comedian Jerry Bedknob? Oh, yeah, yeah. Could have been him from... Uh, from what was that movie? Forty year old virgin, oh, whatever. Boy. Oh yeah, yeah. The Such older a, guy. Yeah, you gotta yeah, lick yeah. it before you stick it. That guy. I think he did. He kill somebody? No. A lot okay. of people miss. <laughs> sorry, mis- sorry, Jerry. That's it's, not me defaming it's, you. It's the younger guy oh, okay. who yells and berates the black guy in the movie, who I forget his name from Weeds. Okay. Yeah. He, right. There's a younger Indian guy who who they get to a spat. Um, he says, "Hey, Will and Grace." I think he calls. I think he calls as a gay joke. Hey, okay. Will and Grace, or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that guy killed his girlfriend. I think. And that is moments before a young unknown comedian named Kevin Hart walks into the scene. And yes, gets that's into right. a fight. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's, and that's about, not true. About, that he was not unknown. He had that was his first yeah. run where he was in like Soul Plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then nothing worked, and sure. then he went back to clubs for a couple of years. How about that? Nothing works, and then you start again, and then you blow up. That's, that's kind nice. of a good, doesn't it? Make that's you Bill, feel like that was Bill Burr. Yeah, there was Louis to an extent. Sure, um, sure, sure. Um, yeah. How about Jonah Hill in that movie? Just wants to buy the <laughs> the goldfish shoes. He uh, literally just says, "I just want to buy these," and then that's it. As and it, then that's whole scene. wins an Oscar, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, then, and then nominated have, for another Oscar. He's been nominated twice, the maybe fat three kid, times. I mean, the fat kid, if you if you describe him, you're like, the fat kid with the afro and glasses from 40 Little Virgin. Yeah. Like, and then, you know. The, the same amount of 12, Oscars as Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> who he starred with in yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. It's Insane. nuts. Insane. Oh, uh, moving on to your next topic, must see TV. Yeah, NBC. not see. You see, I almost put down Seinfeld, which would have been funny because sure. we'll get to that in a little bit. Oh yeah, but um, it wasn't just Seinfeld for me. I loved all, all of the '90s NBC late night TV lineup. I'm talking uh, the single guy. I was just gonna say, with I was Jonathan gonna say, Silverman. Do you remember yeah. the single? Guy? I like the John Larroquette show. show. Uh, then the bigger ones, of course, like Mad About You, Friends, Frasier. Although Frasier was a Tuesday night show, but we're just including must their sure. whole the whole must see TV lineup. We yeah. Have we got Wings, Caroline in the City, Veronica's Closet. Um, the I said Lara Cat earlier. They had a they had a good run, man. Yeah. Seinfeld obviously was big, but yeah, Thursday was my night as a kid. Like I just loved those sitcoms and like because like I do stand up now, you know. But um, did you know that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I. Uh, I didn't love stand-up as a kid. Like, yeah. I liked sketch, and I loved really funny sitcoms. Yeah, yeah. But for whatever reason, I found stand-up very boring. But, yeah. like, when I look back, like, I loved, like, you know, like, Monty Python, Weird Al. I loved funny things. Yeah. But it wasn't stand-up that hooked me until much later in life. But, I gotcha. But, yeah, sitcom, those 90s sitcoms on NBC, they, they killed me. It, they were the best. It makes me sad to see... I mean, they have... They still have good stuff from time to time. But, yeah. like, it kills me, like, what used to be, like... It was an empire of just, like, they could put out... But, you know what, looking back... They weren't all good. No, they, were... they, got, they got lumped in with the good. So yes. it was like, oh, cool. Like, like maybe single guy, if we go back and watch it, is not that great. It might not. But in my head, I'm good. like, oh, it's as good as Friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever. The Naked Truth with Tay Leone was a yeah. big song, a show I liked Suddenly a Susan. Lot. Was that Suddenly anything? Susan was that? Yeah. They, they were everything, man. Yeah. Your next topic, R.E.M. I we love R.E.M. That earlier. I R-E-M. love R.E.M. You're I was a fan? huge R.E.M. fan. To this day, I'm a big R.E.M. fan. I don't know anything but the hits. Yeah. Well, their hits are good. Yeah. And they're one of those bands that, like, you can still play an R.E.M. hit and it won't annoy me. Sure. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. there's some bands that are, like, so big and they're like, oh, we're going to, here's the, the biggest song from, I don't know, Nirvana or yeah. whatever. And you're like, oh, this song. Yeah. <laughs> but for, like, their hits are still very good in my opinion yeah. so obviously i like i don't mean to be like oh i like the deep cuts and i only <laughs> listen to like the b-sides although yeah. i do like those but like yeah. their hits in my opinion are just as good as their their unknown songs but yeah man i grew up 
uh, I didn't grow up listening to REM. Like my first experience with REM was probably listening to like old, like BMG CD commercials. Yeah. And they would play like, this one goes out to the one. It's like, yeah. that song sucks. And then like I got to like high school, I'm like, yeah, that, that's me, man. Do you uh, find yourself yeah. rediscovering bands that were way more popular earlier? Like, oh, for sure. example, in REM, like right now you'll, like I go back, like uh, Prince, they just added Prince's music to all of the streaming services. I heard about that. So I saw a billboard for Pandora and then I'm like, oh, I bet that's on Amazon Prime, which is what I have. And uh, yeah, I listened to the Batman soundtrack on the way over yeah. here. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I know a couple of these songs, especially Party Man. Yeah. And I'm like, but I didn't realize how good the whole soundtrack is. Yeah. I didn't think, I didn't even realize he did the whole soundtrack. Oh, I didn't And uh, yeah, it's great. There's a lot of good songs. So I love I going just knew back. Bat Dance and a couple of those. <laughs> sure. Fleetwood Mac, I did that oh. with recently. They were a lot of fun to go back to. I've had a big Bruce Springsteen kick the last year or two. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I didn't grow up listening to Bruce He's at all. 70. Have you ever seen him? No. I saw him like, like an article. It was like Bruce Springsteen walking on a beach in like a bathing suit. Wow. I'm like, he looks like me. <laughs> and I'm 31. I wish I looked like yeah. Bruce. Yeah. yeah. Like my dad died when he was 70. And wow. I'm like, he didn't look anything like Bruce wow. Springsteen does now. Yeah. You know Bruce. What I mean? And then I got into Billy Joel back in college and I still am obsessed with Billy Joel. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, even yeah, like '90s bands. Like yeah. I got into, I didn't like them at the time, but I really got into like Presence of the United States, another Seattle band. But yeah, I got yeah. into them just in like the last couple of years. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's there's music. Like that's what's great. Really good music doesn't need to have. You don't need to hear it in that moment. Yeah. Like you might feel like a like a poser or something later sure. in life, but like you know whatever. I like love, like uh, the music when you get around to it. About uh, 10 years ago, I got into the Cars. The oh. Time, because Alkaline Trio did a cover of a Cars song. That's the best way to f- discover bands. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. And then um, I got into Psychedelic Furs, who did um, had so many songs I didn't know were theirs. Okay. Then just recently, like over the weekend, somebody asked me to play the Smiths, and I, the first three songs that came up on Amazon Prime, I'm like, "This is the Smiths." That's fun. Like I didn't, I thought they, was, I, I didn't know who they thought those were. That was me and Bowie yeah, after yeah. his death, when everyone was like, "Bowie," I'm like, "Yeah, I know a couple Bowie songs." Yeah. Then I like turned on Spotify or something, mm-hmm. and I was like, "I know all of his songs." Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. didn't know they were his songs. I think that's like a legendary artist uh, mm-hmm. when you when you come across somebody where you're like, "Oh, all these songs are yeah. famous," and I didn't even know. I had like, that with Tom Petty back in college, also, oh, yeah, yeah. where I was like yeah Tom Petty you mean that one free fall and they're like no and so then yeah. I put on a greatest yeah. hits and I'm like oh yeah I know 17 Tom oh, Petty wow. songs <laughs> your next topic speaking to songs is TV theme songs TV theme songs this was uh I watched I'm not sure if I should have put this down because I knew I used to be good with TV theme songs sure. and I you know I bet I still have some in, in the in my nook of my craw whatever yeah. you want to say yeah, yeah but um there was, yeah, there was a time that like I was, I just, I don't know. There's not a lot to say about it. Mm-hmm. I just liked them a lot. And I had, I remember I had a CD that was just a, uh, just a bunch of TV theme songs and I would just listen to it. Did, <laughs> I would just drive you, around. Did you have, you mentioned them earlier. Did you have Weird Al, the TV album? Oh yeah. That yeah, yeah. That was Frank's 2000 inch TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Frank's I lost on Jeopardy. 2000 inch TV. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lost on Jeopardy. Yeah, there's. He used to be really into TV and food. The road and trips. I'm of, okay with him expanding his, his sure. repertoire a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the road trips of my childhood are all listening to Walkman tapes of Weird Al. That's that was cool. all I did. Yeah. Um, your last topic: '90s wrestling. '90s we, wrestling, we, man. We bonded over this. We before. bonded. Yeah. Uh, I see you got a nice Nature Boy shirt on there. I yeah, do. I styling and profiling. Yeah. When I, I mean, I had some. I mean, you don't need to qualify it. That's what I was yeah. about to do. It's like, well, I had some problems as a kid, so I yeah. did it. No, it's fun. It's very fun, fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Um, but for me, just truthfully, yeah. I had some health problems as a kid, and I was home a lot, and I discovered how much I just loved these stories and like yeah. these, like in back then it was a lot of like underdog overcoming stuff type things. And I remember like really connecting with like wrestlers back mm-hmm. then and like the struggle that they had against society yeah, yeah. and the bad guys. And sure. Yeah. I got like, and like, I think something that's pretty true about me and, all spectrums of life is when I get into something, I get like really into it. Sure. So like, I remember there was a time you could ask me and I could trace back every title holder of every belt back to like the sixties, oh, like back, man. like I could be like, Oh yeah. And then uh, Don Morocco lost it to Bruno Sermonton. Like I could just oh, do yeah. that for like 20 minutes. Oh, man. And I don't really have that good a memory anymore on that stuff, but like yeah. I could, I could, I could probably tie together some lineages. Do you use that nineties wrestling? Do you watch modernly at all? No, I haven't watched in a long time, but I have found myself just 
like as I go to sleep now, I'll just kind of read like raw reports or yeah. like things that happened. And then do you read Uproxx ever, the website? Yeah, a little bit. This guy, Brandon Stroud, is doing this really great thing where he does like, he just recaps old nitros and raws every oh, nice. week. Yeah. And it's like right now he's in like mid 97 and the Heart Foundation just came together. That's great. And, they're, and like Brett's in the wheelchair and Stone Cold's <laughs> like still before his neck injury and he's just oh, going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, and it's so fun. But then it's also, you've got like these terrible Nation of Domination angles and so you're like oh man i wish he was back like the old days and it's like nah there's all the montoya of, flying around and like flash stuff. funk and it's yeah. like you know like maybe good talent that just weren't well utilized oh yeah it wasn't this golden age everybody sure. remembers and man when he talks about nitro and just the long going nwo stuff yeah and it's just like this sounds boring three hours too. <laughs> but i was obsessed with it yeah oh, me too me too and also here poor my parents i grew up in seattle with uh which took during the whole Raw Nitro Wars was a, a conscientious observer because yeah. Raw Nitro would come on at five yeah. and it'd go from five to eight and Raw would start at eight and go from eight to ten. So wow. I would get five straight hours every Monday. Oh, I never yeah. had to flip back and forth. I was oh, just watching it straight through. I never thought about that. It was weird. That's, it shouldn't have been like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should have done some, someone was, should have looked into this. <laughs> that was half the fun of like, oh, wait, 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 we gotta go back and then, yeah. then they announced the champion of oh, Mankind yeah. winning. Yeah, on, when Tony uh, Shavani. Yeah. yeah, that was what a dick move. But then you know what? I've heard him talk about it. Yeah. He regrets it. Does and it? he was given the note in his ear to do it and he did it. It was yeah. a war at the time, but yeah, yeah. Mick did not like that. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, the, My good uh, friend Mick. <laughs> I see him around sometimes. Do you? Yeah, he does stand up. Have uh, you opened for him? No, I've never no. opened for him, but I've seen him at clubs a few times. He's very kind. I shook Roddy Piper's hand, first celebrity I met when I moved here in 2012. Oh, that's great. And he was the nicest guy in the world and there was nobody around, so he didn't have to Put yeah. on a face of any kind. Yeah. And he was, he put, he like did the character for me. He was oh, like, wow. I was like, hey, I was like, uh, you know, I just moved here, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, sure. And I'm like, uh, you, are you going to be in the Royal Rumble coming up? Like any, any surprises? And uh -huh. he goes, he like thought about it. And he looked around and he goes, yeah, never know, brother. And he like <laughs> laughed real loud and shook my hand real heartily. You know, oh, and I was like, so whoa, cool. this is great. <laughs> Uh, R.I.P. Roddy. When but, I met Mick at the comic strip in New York, Mick, someone one name basis, um, I said, when I was like 12, I met you at a Hooters outside of Seattle where you're doing like a signing. Yeah. And he's like, I remember that because <laughs> it was supposed to be like a whole run they were going to do of Hooters and it went so poorly they never did another one. <laughs> oh so God. he remembered that one specific day where I met him as a kid. That's <laughs> that awesome. was pretty fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, quick uh, announcement, and I guess I'll do it right here in the middle of the Hot podcast, takes. and I'll mention it uh, in, in episodes to come, but I just got okay to host a party for WrestleMania this year called WrestleMania with Buds at the, That's great. the Stream TV, where I host a live stream show every Thursday. It's called DC and Marvel Facts and Trivia with Buds, and um, Sunday, April 2nd, you'll be able to come watch WrestleMania on a giant screen on a rooftop in Hollywood on Santa Monica wow. Boulevard, which is really, really cool. And it's like the dream way I've wanted to watch WrestleMania. That's so, so cool. Um, I can bring like 20, 30 people up there and then we'll do a couple little segments throughout the uh, the show, like some live streams. Uh, but if you're interested in something, go, coming to something like that or you want to you know, be uh, on the panel for something like that, shoot me an email, ryan at ryanbuds.com. So Adam, those are your five categories. We'll quickly talk about my five and then we'll go into the trivia all right uh you're five uh you like game shows game shows love them uh i used to keep a journal of the prices right over the summers when i was a kid mm -hmm. and i'd write down every contestant's name and what they won and what they bid and <laughs> i would just like flip through it and be like alejandro grand piano all right <laughs> like it was the dumbest thing but i loved game shows my parents were obsessed with who wants to be a millionaire and they would watch it in separate rooms and separate floors of the house and yell out the answers wow. before the other person could the other person would swear at the other person so i was like in the middle of that so i pick which parent i wanted to watch that game show with <laughs> in the late 90s it was so fun was that how somebody cracked um prices right is that they would just watch for like a year and then like this guy like memorized all the prices of all of the items because they never changed are you thinking of prices right are you thinking of uh press your luck no i'm thinking I think there I'm was a big there was right. a big scandal over Press Your Luck where the guy memorized the pattern of the light up. No, no, no. I am thinking Price is Right, although oh, okay. there was that too. This sure. was I read an article in like I don't know Esquire or something like a year okay. or two ago yeah. about this guy. This is this is during the Drew Carey era, so it was oh, relatively recent. Okay, uh, where he just he wanted to be on the show and he just stayed home and he just memorized like he would see like every. 
12 episodes, like this dishwasher would come up and it would always be the same price. And so yeah. he's like, all right. And so he committed that to memory and then like all these items and you know, every once in a while they'd throw out a new one, but like it happened to be on the episode he was on. He knew every single item and came to like, I think within a dollar of the grand really? prize at the very oh end. And like they didn't air the episode for a few months. Um, beyond what they usually hold it for sure. because they need to make sure there wasn't some shenanigans going on, but you can oh, find yeah. that you can find the clip on YouTube, but you can see drew Carey visibly annoyed because he thinks he's been had like he really? thinks something happened. Yeah. Oh, that's it's pretty I'll, fun. I'll Check have, that out. I'll have to look that up. It's the, worth seeing the, uh, I, I watched a three hour documentary on game show network when the game show network first came out like 15 years ago. And it was, uh, it was about the guy who cheated press your luck and they would just, they would like zoom in. They'd be like, look at his eyes. <laughs> look at his eyes memorizing like they, they thought it was like the bit and i'm like if he found out a way to why not yeah why why is that illegal it's like counting cards i was about to use that same example if you can do Who, that if let him count yeah. if you you should add more stacks to your deck if someone's counting cards let them count cards if there's nothing you can physically see or do about it it's like if it's all in someone's head yeah. what are you really gonna do yeah you know what i mean it's crazy uh number two for you Limbiscuits. <laughs> You I'm like the L I M? You know what? When I was thinking of fun categories, because I've done, I do these buds battles every once in a while, where it's just me versus somebody else. The last time I did it was my good friend Pat Francis. Pat and, Francis and Pat Francis and I did Tom Cruise versus Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's we fun. didn't even do five categories. We That's just fun. came up with that, and that was it. That's fun. So um, I was trying to think of something fun this time that I hadn't talked about, but I feel like I know a lot of lyrics and song titles and things. So if you pick that, we'll see how it goes. All right, but, number three, Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo again popped in my head when uh, I, I thought of these things i've seen a lot of different uh, series of scooby-doo i've seen the live action movies oh. i like scooby-doo and like the i like the the schematic of like you know um red herring this thing that you know, like the, the the steps to get yeah. to where they get and i like to figure it out even though it's for children nice <laughs> yeah, number yeah. four video game movies video game movies thinking about that i, I haven't seen assassin's creed i'd say that's the newest oh, video game movie yeah. but it's supposed to be terrible but I've seen the classics like, uh, obviously, Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, which is not a real thing. Now, I've seen <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, the movie, one of the best of uh, the 90s bad movies. <laughs> Old Bob Hoskins didn't even know was, what it was, oh, but his no. grandson or son was like, you got to do it. And he's like, oh, OK. Like, oh, he had no boy. idea. And he said it was the that. biggest disappointment of his career. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's yeah. terrible. Do you see like Spawn and all that? I saw but that's Spawn, more of a comic book movie. Sure. Guess, but yeah, uh, I saw that back in the day. What are some other video game movies? Is it possible that I just thought of Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> Maybe. Went, oh, I could do that. Well, category. did you see that? That Pixels movie it has Pac-Man in it. You know, so that funny, I didn't see it. But that no, would count. That would bad. count. So hopefully uh, you didn't pick that. <laughs> and no, and number five, it's, it's a category I originally put down too, Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah. Love it. It's, Me and my brothers go back and forth with really tough Seinfeld trivia ooh. like, uh, what was this character's name? Like very specific references or like what was Kramer holding in this scene? So I like could that? probably play that with you and your, with your brothers. I, I, I wish I names. almost made that the category. I didn't. Okay. But, um, I almost made that because I'm obsessed with it too. And I feel like I've got some good trivia, but again, some people are like, Oh yeah, I really like Seinfeld. And yeah. then I'm like, all right. And then it's like, I get very disappointed. But the very first episode of this podcast was uh, WWE versus Seinfeld. Ooh. Two friends of mine, Eric Berry and Casey O'Connor, also worked on Crash Leads and uh, Ridiculousness. Okay. So, good guys. So, those are my five categories. This is the time of the podcast where we reveal the categories we chose for each other. So, I'll start with you, Adam. We're doing TV show theme songs. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and for you, Ryan, we're doing Limp Biscuit. Oh, my God. <laughs> Limp Biscuit. This, this will be good. interesting. I hope, this is fun. I hope I'm as good as I think I am at um, the old biscuit. Um, after our brief conversation we had, I realized I'm not as good with TV theme songs as I thought I did. But let's see what I can do. You so know, you let's do. find out. You have a laptop. You could technically look up all these things. I'm not going to do it. All right. Here we go. This is, uh, this is the trivia showdown in okay. this Bud's Battle. Trivia showdown trivia showdown okay so i'm gonna start it off i'll kick it off if you get these questions right you get one point all right how about this um if you well no we'll just if you get it right you get one point all right and i'll keep score over here so i'll start it off this is tv show theme songs number one what tv show theme song starts with the line come and knock on our door Come and knock on a door. That's Three's Company. Three's Company. One point for Adam. Did you watch that show growing up? No, it was weird. I used to but I had a conversation about it the other day. It's not weird. Yeah. They made it weird. Sure. It was a guy living with two girls. Yeah. They're just friends. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I What's have, wrong, Mr. Hooper? You can't enjoy male, female, non-sexual friendship. He had to be gay. Are you talking about Mr. Furley? Yeah. Or I Mr. Had. Roper? Yo, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Hooper was on Sesame Street. That's right. <laughs> but he had a problem with it, too, I understand. I'm sure they all dislike <laughs> that. 
I uh, I watched a lot of that on Nick at Night with my older sister in the mid '90s. Okay. And uh, I did not understand as a child that Jack was uh, th- that the whole scam was that he was uh, gay, so yeah. he could live with the women. Yeah, I just thought they were always up to shenanigans. Which and also, in hindsight, was actually kind of progressive of Mister Furley. Oh, <laughs> at yeah. the same yeah, time, he was all right with that. <laughs> or Mister Roper. I keep giving everyone's names. Well, wrong. they they it was Ropers, and then they left after a couple seasons, and then Furley. Came. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Question number one, you got it. You got one cool. point. What do you so, got for me on the old biscuit side? All right, in uh, in the song "Living It Up," lead singer Fred Durst rap sings. First things first, the chocolate starfish is blank. My man, Fred Durst. Now uh, that is true. That is you're correct. That is a point for you. <laughs> Access uh, Hollywood, license uh, to kill, a yeah. redneck fucker from Jacksonville. That's right. Bringing now, home the dumpster oh, funk, boy. the microphone machete in the back of my trunk, oh rocking so gracious. steady with the he said, he said, she said, and don't forget about the starfish navigation system. Oh, I don't know why. What a bad song. Of now, all, I, it doesn't even make any sense. Now, the only reason I include that is sure. because of the ridiculousness of his phrase. Yeah. First things first, the chocolate starfish <laughs> is my man, Fred Durst. He so, is Fred Durst. And chocolate well, starfish is asshole, right? That's, yes, but also, why would he be referring to himself as his own man? I've, that's strange. bothered me since I was 17 years old. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was obsessed with... I knew all the lyrics to that whole album, Significant yeah. Other, yeah. the Corn albums, Follow the Leader, and the issues and the ones that came out around that time. I don't know why, but we were really into those, my, my <laughs> group of friends. Here's question number two. Every Oh, so I got one point. Sure. Very good. Good for you. Number two. What band did the theme song... Uh, superhero for the show Entourage. Ooh, superhero. Uh, that would be Jane's Addiction. Jane's, Jane's Addiction, Addiction did the song Superhero. Well done. That's your second point. Great Two song. One. I liked that song so much. I bought the Jane's Addiction album that Ooh, it was on. There you go. Um, now, can we be honest? I actually really like the show Entourage, <laughs> which is why I bought that album. Sure. That's a show that hasn't... Uh, it's still fun to watch if you catch it on, but uh, yeah. it's not good. I have a lot of shows that I never finished. Entourage yeah. is one of them. Yeah. Here's some other ones that people always get mad at. It was good for. to leave early on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dexter. People oh, also tell never me finished to leave it. early on that. Yeah. I watched up until the Trinity, and I, which was yes. the last season. Trinity. Was that the the one with uh, John Lithgow? That's right. That was a great season. Amazing acting. A clinic, as mm-hmm. they would say. It was fantastic. Uh, and then uh, Breaking so, Bad, as great as it is, never finished it. I've I'm only on seen about four, four episodes. Oh, I've yeah, only yeah. seen the first couple. It's weird what you take the time to do. And then I'm like, ooh, a Roseanne rerun. And then I watched that. Instead. All right, go ahead. Number two. In Hollywood, where we both uh, live, more or less, sure. uh, there is a street named Westmoreland. Which Limp Bizkit band's <laughs> member's name sounds eerily close to that? <laughs> that would be the uh, lead guitarist, Wes Borland. That is correct. Yeah. Wes Borland. Two points. Sounds very... Every time I drive by <laughs> Westmoreland, I think, <laughs> did he take his name from that or is it a coincidence? Turns out his real birth name is Wes Borland. There you go. And he is... Uh, yeah, nothing to he do with it. He left the band for a while. Then he came back and that, then they didn't do so good. That is a... Uh, as a real prodigal son story right there. Did you ever watch Mr. Show? Yes. Did you watch all of them? Yeah, I'd say so. There was a sketch. I don't even remember what the premise of the sketch was, except it was a talk show. But I think David Cross, or maybe it was Bob Odenkirk, played a talk show host named DeLong Pre Dannon. Wow. And they were like, the DeLong Pre Dannon show. And I don't know why. It's just stuck in my head. But there's a street called DeLong Pre oh, that's funny. in Hollywood. And I'm like, I guarantee oh, absolutely. that they drove past and I said, know that's, DeLong Pre. use that. Right? That's, that's got to be it. Because where else have you ever heard that? Was that the... It's actually, if that's the sketch I'm thinking of, it's one of my favorite Mr. Show sketches. I never know the name of the host. Is that the pre-taped live... The pre-taped call-in talk show? It's either that or... <laughs> it's, that's, where the, it's just so good. It's either that or the, where they're stuck in the boat. Do you remember uh, that one? No, I don't. They're stuck in a boat like castaways. Yeah. And a bird flies by, but it's literally a bird on a string. And it's like, <laughs> caw. And it's, oh, I do know that sketch. Yeah. Actually, I do know that one. And he The keeps, bird reminded me. He keeps talking to the camera like it's a talk show, and the other guy in the boat with him is like, dude, come on, or what? I, I forget what the premise was. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay. So cool. question number- Two for two. Two for two for both of us. Question number three, TV show theme songs. Here's number three. What show that premiered in 1978 had parts sung by TV dad actor Alan Thicke. Ooh. So Alan Thicke is famous for writing several TV show theme songs, but he actually sang on about two of them. This is one of them that premiered in 1978. Alan Thicke. What do you think there, Cousins? Oh, I have no idea about this one. Uh, he's pretty tough. I know him as an actor. I know him as his son, very successful singer. So mm-hmm. it makes sense his dad's a good singer. Yeah. Um, recently passed away. It's a Alan hit, hit sitcom, 78. 
think um mm, i don't know what to think think uh brothers maybe that'll help you out bosom buddies close it was oh, uh right. different strokes different strokes different he sang strokes. on that he was the he was one of the the backup singers or included singers on the different strokes theme song which he also wrote all right it's crazy okay so it's two to two that's two the first two. miss so far what do you got all number right. three uh, Limp Bizkit. Yes. As we know. <laughs> they had a, at one time, not anymore, although I don't know if that's not giving anything away, they had a, uh, a member of the band, one of the original five, was a man named DJ Lethal. Yes. DJ Lethal used to be in another band called yes. House of Pain. That's right. Along with lead singer Everlast, who was the third member of the band House of Pain? Oh, I thought you were just going to ask me the House of Pain part, and I would have oh, definitely no, known it. Absolutely. The third member, Everlast, DJ Lethal, not in a million years could I pull the third name. Those are the only two I could possibly think of. Is it somebody that you would like the name that you would know, like the world would know on his The own? world will know his name, but not because of his name. Sure. You'll see in a second why. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you know what? I'm going to guess uh, the late, great Alan Thicke. I'm sorry. <laughs> his, uh, his name was Danny Boy. Danny Boy. <laughs> Which is a solid rap name, but also a very Irish name. And also Chumbawamba lyrics. Chumbawamba. Oh, Danny Boy. Danny oh, Boy. Dan. Maybe they're talking to him. Maybe. So uh, we each lost that <laughs> round. That was a good, that was a tough round that we just had for us. That was good. Question number four. What band did the theme song for Malcolm in the Middle what band did Malcolm in the Middle's theme song? I love Malcolm You're not in the, the boss of me now. You're not the boss of me. I'm going to say they might be giants. And you might be right. Yeah. That's right. Three points for Awesome. Cousins. They, they might be giants is one of those bands who I don't really appreciate that much. But every once in a while, I'll catch a bunch of their songs. I'm like, yeah. this band's all right. Well, it's crazy. Like some of those older bands that people seem to kind of forget about, like, um, They'll do TV show like like a TV show theme songs. Like I saw Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I think is they might be giants or hey, somebody like that. You may be right. And I was like, what? Like what? <laughs> you know, it's just like M I C K E Y. I'm like that, <laughs> that they, sounds like good. Hire, it easily could hire been this them. band to do this. All right. Uh, number four for you. True yeah. or false? Uh, one of the members of yes. Limp Bizkit, uh, Redneck. What, no, okay. oh, <laughs> Jacksonville <Yeah. laughs> uh, was at one point a guitarist named Buckethead. This is true or false? True or said? false. Buckethead. I'd like to think you came up with Buckethead on your own. So I'm going to say false. Ooh. False is correct. Oh, false. Did, but I did not make it up. Buckethead was at one time a guitarist, I believe a Japanese guitarist. Really? Who uh, joined, although Dick, I mean, me not mid Japanese, <laughs> that is me, um, who joined the 2000s Guns N' Roses revival. Um, oh, he wore a KFC bucket on his head no. and he went by the name Buckethead. Oh that is what God. you need to know. But he always reminded me of West Portland. There's so whole, I included that. There's much. a whole separate hour podcast where we'll talk about Buckethead. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Here's number five for you and TV theme songs. Number five, what are the three words Stewie Griffin sings solo in the Family Guy theme song intro? Well, this is a controversial one. As you, I don't know if you were in college back in, during the Family Guy's heyday, yeah. but there was people who said there was two different things he said. Oh, you're right. Um, <clears throat> well, I looked up the lyrics because I remembered that oh, part, okay. and I thought it'd be a good question. So I, yeah. I think it's probably the most common set. Laugh and cry. Yes, is the lyric. And what did um, you? What was the other one? I believe it was fucking cry. <laughs> I think so. But again, why would they allow that? Sure. There you go. Four or points. F and cry is what maybe they claimed he said. Four points for Team Adam. Oh, Here's right. number five for Biscuit on the bonus track of the 2001 D12 album Devil's Night. Yes. Uh, lead singer Eminem released a song called Girls, where he called out Limp Bizkit. Prior to the release of the song, oh my God. Eminem had only one public interaction with Fred Durst that indicated problems were bubbling under the surface. What was that incident? <sighs> I have an answer, but I don't know if it's the right one. All right. First of all, the Anger Management Tour was amazing, and it was Limp Bizkit and Eminem touring together. And I saw it, and it was the coolest concert I've ever been to. Nice. Limp Bizkit performed in front. They had a, almost like a Transformers robot. Mm. And like DJ Lethal was in like the center console of the nice. robot and it moved and things. It was really well done. And then Eminem came out and did the whole Marshall Mathers LP, but he did like all his first stuff. Then the, And it was like, um, it was his house that he grew up in like as a set. And then he, there was a quick intermission. They flipped the whole thing around, and it was a um, a castle with flaming shit that would pop up. Nice. And he did all the harder stuff. It was the it was a great concert, All State Arena in uh, like <laughs> 2001 or something. Um, I'm gonna say that it was um, the recording of a song called "Turn Me Loose" 
Is that anything like that? Because they had a song called Turn Me Loose that they never really finished. Mm. And there was I, I, there was some kind of lyric or something from another diss song where he's like, if you didn't want to finish the fucking song, we shouldn't have done the fucking song. I know song. that. No, I know that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, That's I what do. I'm thinking of. That's not the right answer. What that was the of? answer I was looking for, although I do know what you're referencing. Okay. But uh, the song, I the, well, the, the reference I was talking about was uh, Eminem high-fiving Carson Daly at the VMAs, but leaving Fred Durst hanging during his performance of The Real Slim Shady. Really? He walked down the aisle being like, I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Slim Shady. And then yeah. he's like, Grabbing his hang crash. out with Carson Daly and Fred Durst, hearing Margot over who she gave, head to first. Yeah. And then uh, he high-fives Carson Daly, and Fred Durst goes for one, and he just blows him off. Really? And then so that's on that why... song, Girls, Eminem's like, it wasn't an accident. I purposely didn't give you any play at the Video Music Awards. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Because it looked like it could have been an accident. That's but it was solid beef right there. <laughs> Here we go. This All is right. uh, your next question. This is number. So I didn't away. miss. I I you uh, I missed one, but you have. So it's four to three right All now. Right, You're cool. winning by one. This is number six for TV show theme songs. What '80s '90s sitcom had the lyrics? There's a time for love and a time for living. You take a chance and face the wind. Ooh, I, the first I, line I, to the song. I know that lyric, but I can't place it sonic. I'll give you a hint. Right. There is a blue van driving down a autumn oh. road. Oh, that'd be who's the boss. There you go. Yeah. Five points for old Blue man. van gives that one away, right, <laughs> buds? Uh, I'm just going to, I have nothing. I know nothing about who's the boss. There you go. Um, <laughs> I'll get right into your question. Uh, on one of your all-time favorite, this is, this is like a, I'm sure it's a putt for you. All right. On Significant Other. Uh-huh. Uh, which MTV personality performs a track at the end called Rant? MTV personality Rant. Now, I know him as an MTV personality, but he also had done other things. So maybe I don't want to throw it with that. He's not a rapper or He's like not a rapper. or something? No. Hmm. Rant. But there's a track, I believe it's a bonus track, or towards the end of the Significant Other album called Rant. And all he does is he whines for a while until Fred comes in and calms him down a bit. <laughs> As they would. <laughs> that seemed like I a wonder, trope at that time. <laughs> I wonder who this is. If it's an MTV personality. I don't think it's somebody like Carson Daly. He had a distinct was... look. Look. Do you remember Jesse Camp? Jesse Camp, like Jesse. Is, Jesse yeah, Camp is in Jesse my head Camp. for some reason. But it I don't wasn't, think... it, I'll tell you, it wasn't Jesse Camp. It wasn't Jesse Camp. A distinct look. It was that same era of Jesse Camp, though. Was it Ben Stiller? No, it was not uh, Ben Stiller. What do you got? It was Matt Pinfield. Oh, Matt, they were bald, good friends. Bald little man named Pat Finn. Do you remember? Was that a miss? Was that a bad hint? Was he an MTV guy? He was. I remember he was a him VJ. As MTV. He was. Okay. And right. then he did a thing called Farm Club. Do you remember oh. that? It was like no. a. It was like a, a live music show that would air after Raw on USA. Oh. It was like f- 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 Farm Club. Oh yes, and like, yes, do, yes. And Eminem, I did know that. Eminem would be on there doing. It would be a song like a rap. It was like Fat Farm produced it or something. Yeah, I something think, like that. Right. F- 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 yeah. Farm Club. Yeah. That was uh, that was a good question. Here's it, so it's five to three. Adam's beating me by a few here. This is I think number, you can catch up on some of these. Number seven. What rapper sang the Keenan and Kel theme song and appeared in the show with the duo? Well, you know I know this. It's my man Coolio. It is, it <laughs> is Seattle's own Seattle's, Seattle's own, own Coolio. Coolio. That's right. Uh, slide, slide, slippery side. Don't say shh. Just get inside. <laughs> um, let's let's talk about that lyric real quick. <laughs> Uh, sounds like a kidnapping. Oh, sounds yeah. like a sure. kidnapping, or uh, or maybe like a rape. Maybe could be like a gross bad, rape. Bad Coolio. Bad Coolio. Uh, now this is one that. Uh, well, actually, I'm not going to say too much because we may have different versions of you this. You came up with great questions, by the Thank way. Thank you. These are good ones. We may have different questions or maybe different answers to this question. Okay. Earlier, you mentioned 2001 at the Allstate Arena. You saw yes. the anger management tour in oh, 2001. Yeah. That uh-huh. had man, that had Eminem on it. They had Limp Bizkit on it. Now, oh, when Roach, it, whoa, whoa, Crystal whoa, whoa, Method. Oh, see, now we're getting different. <laughs> yeah. It came to Tacoma, Washington as well. Okay. <laughs> and I took my first girlfriend, Rebecca Sponigle, uh, to that concert. Rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> no? No, oh. that's fine. Um, uh, when they came to my town, yes. there were two other acts in the bill, along with Limp Bizkit and Eminem. Okay. Um, you may or may not have just mentioned one of them. Okay. Uh, now, this this might be hard because you said two bands there. One of them wasn't on my leg. So I don't know if I'm... I, I put a note by this. We're going to have to leave it open to interpretation because I knew it It bounced around. Can I name 10 bands? And then absolutely. Five? Okay. Absolutely. Here's, here's who I think it could be. Ready? Uh, the Executioners. Nope. Do you remember them? I do remember the Executioners. They the were executioners. a DJ group, yeah. Crystal Method. Okay, that was not that. Not on there. Corn was a special guest in Chicago. Oh, that's So I cool. don't know. Wasn't them. Okay. Uh, Filter. No. 
now. Um, Papa Roach. Papa Roach was so one of them. Now okay. you have one left. And I want to help you out because sure. I feel like you went in the wrong direction. Not necessarily a band band. Not necessarily a band band. So like a rapper? Could have been a rapper. Exhibit. It was Exhibit. It was Exhibit. exhibit. Yeah. Points for Ryan Buds. Was it, did Exhibit have a song with the Executioners because of the uh, X? I well, like yeah. I remember he had an crossover. album called Drugs and Alcohol. Uh, no, was it Drugs and Alcohol? It was called Ruthless. It was Exhibit's first album. Yeah. Uh, not first album, but his first, I think with Infinite, he had a record. Right. Um, and uh, he had a song called Drugs and Alcohol. And I believe he worked with the Executioners pretty regularly. I liked those guys. They, they were, were pretty they good. They were a good little band. Um, yeah, Exhibit. When I went, it was Exhibit, followed by Pop Roach, followed by Eminem, and closing out was Limp Bizkit. I remember wow. that whole tour. I, it, it, I was biting my lip when you were talking there about it, because I remembered everything you said. It was a great time. Number eight for TV show theme songs. This Life is the name of the title song to what FX show? This Life is the title song to an FX show's Man, theme song. I'm not, this a, I'm not an FX guy. Um, I'll give you a hint. Currently on the air? Not on the air. Ooh. And I would call this a heavy drama. A heavy drama? See, I was leaning towards Wilfred. That dog show. Sure. <laughs> this life. FX. I've played this. I've done a, a round at live events where I play the song, which I'll actually be doing tonight. So after this, we'll play, I'll play some songs for you if we have time, and you'll see how many of those you get. They're a little bit more classic, and there's no lyrics. FX. Yeah. I keep getting them confused with AMC. But when I play this one, people go nuts at the bar because they love this show. FX. I mean, guesses. Wilfred. Have, yeah, I'd say Wilfred. <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy. Never seen it. Yeah, yeah. Me neither. This is number uh, eight for your side. Which of these three singers mm-hmm. did lead singer of Limp Bizkit, Fred Durst, not feud with? Okay. Big feuder. Scott Stapp. Yes. Lead singer Creed. I think they shot a porn together, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I believe that was Kid Rock. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. um, uh, Everlast. Okay. House of Pain. Or Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. I'm sorry, the correct <sighs> answer is Everlast. I don't they know how. Feuded? I don't know how they didn't beef <laughs> since he took his DJ away from him. Sure, uh, it's just him he, and Danny Boy hanging he, out. He, he I know, I but he so had much. trouble with uh, Creed, Scott Sapp. They almost got into a celebrity boxing match one time. That's right. Uh, and Trent Reznor, um, he took great offense to. Um, it, he did the the line from "You wanna be like an animal," oh, and Reznor yeah. did not like that. And he's um, no longer with us, is he? No, Trent's still alive. He just did the score for the Social Network, if I remember correctly. He got an Oscar for it. Who, who died that was the lead singer of a band? Uh, a lot of people. Puddle of Mud. That guy no, died a couple uh, years ago. Somebody like Nine Inch Nails, oh. but um, the other one. A lot of those guys died. The hell was that guy? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, Stoop, uh, oh, Stone Temple Pilots. Yes. What yeah. was that guy's name? Uh, Wyland, Scott Wyland. He's no longer with us. No, he's That's dead. right. Uh, Everlast, according to the internet, because I want to confirm this today, because yeah. I was making these questions, and I'm like, I don't want to just like, oh, yeah, I remember this as a kid, and it totally wasn't right. <laughs> yeah. But it says he, they never had problems. How did what he I'm, never do battery commercials? Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> he would have been so good. Here's number nine. Okay. This is switching it up. All so right. if you thought you didn't know Sons of Anarchy, maybe you won't know this too. Number nine, Barney's theme song for the show Barney and Friends starts with these lyrics. Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination, and when he's tall, he's what we call a what? Barney is a dinosaur from I, our I imagination. It rhymes with imagination. Yes, and when he's tall, he's what we call a... <sighs> Do you remember? Did you watch this show? Um, I just finished. In passing. I just finished the first season on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, I'm gonna say sensation. Close. Oh, a, uh, actually, yes. Well, there's. I'm, I'm missing there's a one word. more word. Phonetically, I can tell I'm missing yes. a word there. A singing sensation, dancing sensation, dinosaur. Sensation. Dinosaur sensation. I'm gonna give it to you. you got no, the point there. give me a half. Fine. Dinosaur sensation. Um, I didn't get, it didn't make any sense to me at first. I'm like, Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination. And when he's tall, I'm like, what do you mean when he's tall? But he is a doll that then blows up into the full size Whatever, thing. Yeah. So I guess that makes sense. All right. All right. We got one more question for you. Two I more, two more, two yeah. more for me and one for you. In a 2000 interview and then yes. later repeated multiple times. So mm-hmm. it's not just, you had to hear this one interview. It became sure. part of the Fred Durst lore. If I remember correctly, I looked it up and confirmed this was actually, this ha- did happen. Lead singer of Limp Bizkit, Fred Durst. So many questions go back to Fred. Famously said that he never, What? That's it. All I get. He never won. It's <laughs> that he. It was. It was. Uh, 
what's a better way I should have worded this? He, uh, you're the trivia guy. Um, <laughs> he, you know, they're a party band. They rock and roll. They have some good time. Yet, despite all of that public image, Fred Durst never um, partook in or imbibed what? Well, my first guess before I knew any of that was lip synced or something like that. Like I never oh, lip synced, nah, but that I don't. Wasn't it. <laughs> uh, so my next guess would be, let's see. I never. Is it one word? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah? one or okay. two. You could you, you could. Search I that never. Uh, OD'd. He said he never smoked weed. Really? His dad, the, according to what he had said back in the old days, who knows? Interesting. He said his dad was a cop. Yeah. And he saw a lot of tough stuff as a kid yeah and people messed up and stuff and he for a while he was straight edge yeah and i don't know if that's true anymore but back in 2000 he smoked that's yeah. that's a tough one i don't want to take points away from you from that because you know but you know according that to is a, that is a tough one but a good question and yeah. good to know here's your last question final questions tv show theme yeah, songs right, so. here we go what band sang the party of five theme closer to free i want i know the song closer to free yeah. closer to free Dang. It's cow related, I think. I don't even know. I might be thinking of the wrong word. <laughs> cow related. <laughs> I think I'm definitely thinking the wrong word. Yeah. Any guesses? I know the song. Mm -hmm. So it's frustrating. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants to live. I don't want to live. Is that mm -hmm. the same song? Uh, yeah, same one. You know, everybody wants to be closer to free. F word. I know it. It's the Bodines. Yeah, you're thinking bovines. Bovines. That's right. That's that's. I was close. not gonna say bovine. <laughs> bovine. So and here's we're fine. here's the last question. The for final me. question for you: What now antiquated music program? Yeah. Did Limp Bizkit brag they downloaded in order to let all the ladies in the cave get their groove on? Napster. Ooh, think what? about it a little bit. I think you can get this one. What antiquated music program did Limp Bizkit brag they downloaded to let all the ladies in the cave get the groove on? Oh, I know the lyric. All the ladies in the cave. They downloaded Shockwave. They downloaded the Shockwave. <laughs> Never realized that that was what they were saying. That I thought has they now were saying been like, purchased by Adobe. I thought, they, I thought they were saying like we like like we downloaded a Shockwave. I like, mean, maybe that's what they're saying, oh, but that's what the lyric I always interpreted is because that was a relevant program at the time, and oh, it was man. a music player. So amazing. <laughs> Maybe Amazing. I got their whole. What a way to close story. out the, the what trivia. What a show! Now Thanks, I, Ryan. I usually do a thing called categories with oh. buds, where we go back and forth. Do you have one more minute? Categories with buds. I have one minute. Cool. This is uh, this is called categories with buds. We're gonna go back and forth, naming WWE champions. Let's go. Which you said you were good at. Yes. So let's see how long we can All go. Right. I'm gonna kick it off with. Are Stone we talking world champion? The the main world champion because now big, it's a the little big gold belt. Yeah. Now it's a little weird. All I right. guess you would call it the universal championship sure. now. Okay. The red belt. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna kick it off. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. Hulk Hogan. Shawn Michaels. Andre the Giant. Undertaker. Uh, Chris Jericho. I am going to say Yokozuna. I will then say John Cena. I will say Randy Orton. Edge. I will say The Rock. Batista. I will say CM Punk. I will now say Kevin Owens, who just lost the belt. Okay. Was that a universal title? That's the universal, what I would think they call like that's this. The, the, so I can't say Bray Wyatt? Uh, technically not. That's <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's one, fine. But yeah, yeah. I will say Ric Flair. Yes. Um, the champion right now, Goldberg. Oh, okay. Goldberg won it from um, Kevin Owens. I will say Brock Lesnar. There you go. Uh, I will say... Um, this is harder than I thought. Now yeah, that, it's now that I'm saying it out loud, and this is like the big belt. Ultimate Warrior. Okay, Bob Backlund, Macho Man, Randy Savage, Diesel. I think you said Shawn Michaels already, didn't you? Yeah, but Diesel's different. Yeah. No, oh, I'm, okay. I'm oh, right. That it's was like, me yeah, buying they're time. Related. Was, <laughs> uh, champion, man. I'm gonna say the world champion. That's a that for a happy, while they would hang one. on to him for like a couple of years. So it was a little yeah. Hungry. Back in the day, uh, man. I don't think I can think of another Triple H. Triple H. Triple H. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my uh, alarm for the okay meter going on. Well, we can roll out then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll try. I'll just throw it in the dark. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. I mean, I can say like, "Oh, Don Morocco," or like I one got, of those old guys. I got the last one. You ready? Got 
what you talked about earlier. Mick Foley Mankind. Mick Foley Mankind! Oh! So, I kept thinking of all these IC champs. <laughs> you beat me, Adam. You beat yeah. me uh, seven to six. Thank you. So well, well, that's done, fun. Sir. Well, thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. And I appreciate because, it. Because you beat me, I have a prize for you. Ooh, thank you. A copy of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, groovy! From Pizza Hut back in <laughs> I know that maybe I know that two thousand one or two. I remember these. So enjoy that. You couldn't find that on DVD for a really long time until just recently. Shout Factory put it out. So enjoy. Well, that's fine. Uh, My wife lives right by San Dimas, and so we're go. all always over in that part of the world. Anything you want to plug before you take off? Yes. Um, I do a lot of live videos every week on uh, this web on the website called Twenty Two Words, which is uh, on the Facebook page Twenty Two Words. Just find it, Facebook, two, two words. I do live videos pretty much every day. It's like an hour talk show. Very good. Uh, we'll get you on it soon, Ryan. Sounds it's actually good, man. pretty fun. Um, AdamCousins.com? Yeah. AdamCousins.com. Check me out. C-O-Z-E-N-S. Like Love dozens it. with a C instead of a D. Dude, thanks for the Limp Bizkit questions. Thanks for taking some time, and have a good rest of your day. Yeah, you too, buddy. Thanks for coming by. A very, very fun, fun, fun beer-infused Buds battle right here on the Trivia with Buds podcast. Shout out to Adam Cousins. Check out AdamCousins.com. C-O-Z-E-N-S. He is a very funny dude, and uh, I think you will love his stuff. I have uh, this week's listener quiz for you right here. That's right. You can listen to this show and play along by answering these three questions at home. All you have to do is send me a tweet or a message or an email, ryan at ryanbuds.com, with the answers to these three random questions, and you will get a personalized greeting card from me in the mail of the Superman Variety. I have a ton of cool Superman vintage looking greeting cards, and I will send you one with uh, some other fun stuff inside of it as well. Some fun pictures and little uh, sign things and uh, fun stuff. So if you like this show and you want to win a Superman card filled with fun stuff, uh, all you have to do is send me the answers to these questions. Here are this week's listener quiz questions. Here we go. Question number one What famous fictional cannibal? made his first appearance in the 1981 novel Red Dragon. Question number one, what famous fictional cannibal made his first appearance in the 1981 novel Red Dragon? Question number two is of uh, the geography uh, persuasion, and it is which U.S. state is sometimes referred to as the Beaver State? Which U.S. state is sometimes referred to as the Beaver State? And here's question number two. Three. It's about history and uh, foods. What company introduced the first canned ham in the United States in 1926? Question number three. What company introduced the first canned ham in the United States in 1926? Those are your three listener quiz questions. Thanks for playing along and uh, just send me the answers to win some fun stuff. Thank you so much for listening to the Trivia with Buds podcast. Leave it a review on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Google Play, however you listen, and let me know how you listen. I would love to hear uh, the device you listen on and uh, what service you use. That's always interesting to me. I use uh, Libsyn for my podcast hosting, and I'm about to upgrade it, so I think it might start telling you that stuff at the next level. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just find that stuff out and be able to uh, target more listeners easier. Also, check out my good friends at Nuke the Fridge. Mr. Lewis Love, he runs that website, and uh, he does a great job and gives out tons of movie passes and posters and prize packs. So if you like that kind of stuff and you want to go see some screenings around L.A. or Chicago or New York, check out NukeTheFridge.com or Nuke the Fridge on Facebook. Join the group with over 150,000 people in it, I think. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next week on the Trivia with Buds podcast. Bye-bye.